All right, guys, we're officially recording. I, I want to make this very clear. Chasing a stock, just like a lot of people did right here, this is a really good example. This stock was up a lot. There were really no healthy dips and pullbacks to get back in. People just chase from 36 to 42 on a stock that's like, man, why is this running again outside of crack week, right? Like it ran two days ago. It got slaughtered yesterday. Like this should be a low hanging fruit, man. Like, like this should probably be near the sixes. What's this doing here at 24 and 42, right? Well, the thing about chasing is it's the same results as fighting trend. So when you chase, just know that you're hopped up on emotions, you're excited, you feel like you missed the boat, you wanna get in what everybody's got in. Another example I can think of is, guys, think about all the people that long ship coin in the last, you know, whatever, you know, or when it was running. It's like, we all knew how that would end, right? Like, I'm not here to trash crypto or anything. I'm just, I'm just, we knew how that would, everybody chased their asses off. And now it's like at lows of like a month ago or something. Like, the point is, is when you chase, you are entering and risking money on an emotional trigger that is counterintuitive to logic that's gonna make you money. You're just hopped up, dude. It's like you just took a Molly and now you wanna go on Tinder. Well, that doesn't even make sense, bro. You're gonna wanna fall in love with threes, fours, fives, tens, everybody that will give you a high five because you're all hopped up on Molly and you're a horny bastard. I'm giving funny analogies, but the point is, go in with a clear head, man. Don't swipe left or right until you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> Women or men, it doesn't matter. You don't want to get an asshole, ladies and dudes. You don't want to get a girl who's going to nag you all day. I don't know. Like, what's the thing that goes both ways, right? Like, a dude's an asshole, a girl now. I don't know. However you guys want to debacle that one. But now that we're kind of here, uh, done with the tutorial, I want to give you guys a chance to ask questions. We can make this fun. We can talk about whatever you want today. But when it comes to... The title of this video is how to profit in a short squeeze market. I just want to answer this real quick. The way you profit in a short squeeze market is nail and bail when you have your confirmation first. People longing from 36 to 42 had zero confirmation. People shorting here and here. These are terrible. Like you need confirmation and then you nail and bail. That's how to do it in a short squeeze market because remember, we have markets where everything goes down and then, you know, shorts get a little complacent. They get a little comfortable. And then we have markets where a lot of things, a lot of things just run. And right now we're in crack week. We're in Turkey work where things are just by default, notoriously known to run. So you got to be in quick and you got to get out quick, kind of like a scalper's mentality, but only until you know that things are breaking down, not right here in anticipation and not right here at a FOMO art should you be shorting. If anything, this was confirmation all day for longs. Does that make sense? Longs had their confirmations, not shorts. And then days like, you know, yesterday on LBGN, this is a confirmation for shorts, but you got to wait for the pop. Like, this is what I'm talking about, man. And when it comes back to anything that's important, it's always about VWAP, VWAP, VWAP. VWAP. Why would you be shorting on this confirmation yesterday when arguably this little dip, but I'm not talking about this little piece of shit. I'm talking about everything is playing ping pong and or over VWAP yesterday. Why are you shorting here? Why are you shorting here? You definitely are dumb if you're shorting here and you are just an idiot if you're shorting here. I say this with love, but I got to throw you around a little bit like a punching bag every now and then so you'll learn because tough love is a real thing with real results. Guys, if you were shorting this yesterday, I hate to say this. I really do because the educator in me is like, I got to be blunt, but the real big hearted Tosh side of me is like, well, don't be too brutal on them. Guys, you deserve a loss if you're shorting this yesterday. You do. It's crack week. And look at it over VWAP all day with confirmation to the long side. Now, 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 I'm going to flip the script. For any of you longs who got greedy, and said, okay, you know, I made money yesterday. I'm going to come in right here. And yeah, it's come down from 45 to 50. But guess what? Guess what? This thing's going to run to 100. It's going to run to 1,000. I'm going to make more money than I did yesterday. And then you have all the short confirmations right here. When you have a stock opening far from highs into pre-market and then opening intraday far from pre-market high, 
bing, bang, and boom, what are the confirmations right here? It's broken. Why are longs getting greedy on this? And then they deserve to lose if they're longing this in the morning. Specifically, and I know you guys already see it because I'm, I scream at you every week about this, when a stock opens way under VWAP and then pops to VWAP, where's the short? On that pop, baby, this is not a long. So if you, if you shorted yesterday, almost at any point, guys, you kind of deserve to lose. And if you longed yesterday at any point way under VWAP, you kind of deserve to lose, I'm sorry. That's how simple trading can be. Now, sometimes it seems like one plus one equals two, but sometimes one plus one in trading does kind of seem to equal five. I, I, I'm not gonna throw that out the window and say it's that simple, but the foundational building blocks of what a process is of I'm only gonna short broken stocks, I'm only gonna long strong stocks, and maybe I'll take a week off of shorting for freaking crack week or et cetera, et cetera, is you are going to understand through that. Paul Singh, what's up? This guy is a good salesman. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I'm the creator of MIC, man. So I'm just selling my own brand, bro. I'm just selling our own creation, man. Um, but the point is, guys, is we're passionate behind this. And if I sound like a good salesman, it's just because we've been doing this for fucking eight years and I see the results of our members and I want you guys to learn. So um, you guys need to stop overcomplicating this. Okay, do you guys have any questions? Should I bring someone on? Tom, James, are you guys here? Do you guys want to come on? Aloha Trader, anybody? Oh, uh, sorry, Travers, did I miss something? What are your expectations for the week after crack week? Is there a rub off effect traditionally? Oh, dude, great question. That, my friend, is a very hit or miss as what, <laughs> yeah, I'll bring someone on. What I've noticed, Travers, for years is it's a hit or miss, man. Sometimes it does have like kind of like an earthquake after effect shock. So what you'll see is um, obviously if this is earthquake week, what you'll see is like, hey, this was the 10.0 earthquake all week, but now we have six and fives and fours. Like there's still a lingering volume and a lingering FOMO that does happen. And then bro, sometimes no joke, people just up and bail. Like they're like, fuck volume, fuck trading. I just had turkey and now I'm done trading forever. It's weird, man. So, you know, I think as per next week, we'll just see. We'll just see, we'll wake up and we'll see if it's just day-to-day -day process, man. You know, here's the thing about process. They can run, they cannot run, they can die, they can squeeze, they can parabolic, and all you gotta do is line to line. So when a lot of people come in, they're like, oh my God, like how are you guys gonna have a trading career when the spy tanks? Guys, spy could go in the biggest bear market tomorrow and guess what we'll still be doing? Our process, shorting, overextended pigs, you know, piggy small caps running at our lines, line to line. Um, thanks, Tosh. I like to understand things fully before I truly believe in it. So I have a few questions after watching the accelerator. Sure, brother. Um, I quickly, uh, I, I, came from, I came from a service that teaches cut losses quickly, but the accelerator is talking about trading off multiple lines and adding to a loser to scale in. Well, th there, there's a difference, Tony, and, and I'll make that very clear between adding to a loser or adding to a plan, brother. I'll make that very clear. I'm having a tough time grasping the MIC process because of it. Okay, very, very understandable. So let's look at something like LVG, LGVN today. I always confuse that. So let's take a look at yesterday, right, brother? So the thing about a process, right? The thing about a process is everything that I've learned in my process has been back tested by me through results. And within that process, there is a plan I incorporate each morning. So let's, let's take a look at LGVN yesterday. Say your plan was to short this line VWAP up to this point, that would, that would be a plan. Now I'm just using this more for a pattern because this is something I have at my disposal right now. Not necessarily like, hey, I'm gonna scale from 28 to 34. This could be a 20 cent move on a lot of stocks. I'm just trying to show you a pattern. So let's, let's, let's break this down on more so not the numbers here, but a pattern. If my original plan, whatever it is, it could be any stock of the day, I'm looking to scale from here to here, that's a preset plan. So anything that goes into, hey, I'm scaling at line one, maybe you even have another resistance point at, in the middle, or I'm just giving you an example, but line two and line three, right? Because line to line at MIC is 
you scale the lines if they're not too far apart from each other. And this is why I don't want you paying attention to the numbers right now. If this was 20 cents, you'd be like, oh, dude, I'm scaling line one, two, and three, right? Or lines one and two. But because this is like 28 to 34, they are very far from each other. Typically, when the lines are, say, you know, when the lines are say this far apart in number wise, you would scale here. If this line didn't work, then you would wait for the outer line and use the next line. This is what Bow incorporated the whole process of line by line. But let's say it's like a 20 cent move or even just 40 cents. The plan would be, okay, I wanna scale at this resistance point, the tops right here up to these tops because this would be a serious ceiling. Anything that you scale past that is adding to a loser. So, right, like if this is your initial plan, and I'll even draw, hold on. If this is your initial scale zone and you add anything outside of that, you're adding to a loser. But because you pre planned this and what was willing to lose, and hey, look, I'll just bring it down. Maybe you only wanted to scale that. Whatever your pre plan is, is not adding to a loser, it's adding to your plan. I, I, hope, I hope that makes sense, man, because believe me, MIC process is very simple, but it's also very intricate and there are intricacies that you want to pay attention to, outer line, VWAP, trend, things like that. So maybe we can flush this out more. If you have more questions, send them to me. Scaling, oh yeah, exactly, exactly, dude, right here. David just answered it. Scaling gets you a pre-planned desired average, not adding to a loser. So let me, let me actually go uh, a step further. Let me show you what we mean in the watch list. So let, let me just use a couple random examples from Alex's watch list today, right? Alex's, let me, let me use an exact specific one. Boom, KTTA. He even gave a stop out, right? So check this out, man. So come the open, if this stock would have flown to uh, seven, to 750, to eight, he would have scaled all three of those points. If, 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 if it would have made it to those lines, if he's starting right here, here, let me just make sure you have some commentary lined up just in case you're asking questions. Uh, but Tony, check this out. So if the stock opened right here and he's getting in at 650, when this is his original plan, he's adding all the way up to here, he's adding to a loser. That's not his original plan. This is a pre thought out, you know, logical plan of where quote unquote, the stock really should fail. And if he so happens to scale from seven to eight and, and 750, the whole and a half dollar line, so these three levels within this area, nothing in that is adding to a loser because it's pre-planned. I cannot stress this enough, guys. You can trade anything that you want. If you pre-plan what you're risking, where are you getting in and where you're gonna stop out at, you technically can trade whatever you want. The only time we add to a loser is when you go like this. All right, I'm in. Oh shit. Um, I didn't anticipate this. Okay. I mean, I, I, I guess I could add a little bit more. I, I, okay. Maybe just that's winging it. That's saying this is not pre-planned. This is not part of my plan. I honestly am just hoping at this point, if I get my average up, maybe it'll tank. Fuck. What do I do? Fuck. What do I do? I have been in that situation and shit a trading diaper more times than you can count in the last eight years as a trader. When you pre-plan you have a steady hand. You have your emotions in control. When you don't pre-plan and look at a watch list and know what you're getting yourself into for that day, brother, you are done. You are smoked. So let me go back to the first part of your question. I was actually in a community where they said, cut your losses quickly. I've heard this very commonly. Yes, you should cut your losses quickly, Tony, but just know that the rudimentary guide that a lot of furus place out there of, hey, I'm going to cut my losses quickly, they use it to kind of protect themselves. And I hate to say this because I feel like I'm hating on them. I'm trying not to send hate out there for them, but they're doing it as a way of more marketing than actual trading of saying, hey, you should just risk 10 cents per trade. You really should only risk 20 cents tops. Well, brother, that doesn't fucking make sense because this might be line to line with a 93% win rate on Alex's watch list. Why would you be cutting at 20 cents? Because you're scared of the money? Because you're scared of the money or you don't want your members to blow up? Like it's kind of more of a marketing thing. So when we teach real trading of like, hey guys, this stock really should, if it gets up there from seven to eight, I mean, the one time out of 10, this blows through and keeps going. Nine times out of 10, bro, this is gonna follow suit. Just like Alex's watch list said, you know, Nancy confirmed, we have a like, uh, well, I'll go back. I'll go back. 88 to 92% win rate. Are you 
going to cut because you're looking at your, your, your P and L? Because if you're looking at your P and L, you're going to cut when you shouldn't be cutting because you're scared of the money. This is why in the beginning of this webinar, I said, there's two types of mindsets. I'm coming in with my process. I'm ready to make fucking money. If my lines hit or man, like, I, I think I know what I'm doing, but it's hitting my lines. Like, should I give it a little bit more? Oh, I'm already down 300 bucks, but I could be down 400 if it hits the next line. A, a confident trader wants to be down that because he's in his plan. He's in his lines. He's like, dude, I'm only down 300 bucks and I get to freaking double down at the line that I wanted to double down at or add or do 30% above, like whatever. I'm just giving you random examples of thought, but there's traders who are confident and then there's traders like, I got to cut this because I'm already 10 cents down. Well, dude, what if it was already in your plan to be 10 cents down? Now you, you should be getting excited because you're actually able to get more on. So there's, there's a couple ways to look at that, right? Craig on um, uh, YouTube, your loss is where you know your plan has failed, not when you're drawn down, which could be part of your plan. I like that, Craig. That's really well said. Yes, your loss is where your plan has failed. If this would have ran today up to seven to eight, Alex would have shorted from seven to eight, a hundred percent. And here's the thing, because it's part of his plan. And here's the thing, if it would have ran at 850, he would have cut for a loss. I can almost guarantee that, especially 860, because that would have been over pre, um, previous high a day, which always, 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 basically by just fucking default judgment is a, you cut it because you can be screwed. You can always throw it back on because here's the thing. I'll just take these lines off. If a stock runs, guys, to outer lines, say something like $8, say you even get in at eight, say you waited eight to 850, you wanted the outermost line possible. Say you started there and you started shorting at eight to 850 and you added a little bit and it, it, you know, it didn't go as planned and it goes to 860 and you cut it for a loss. And then what if it death candles right after that? You can always get back in. Dude, I see something like this or a massive tank candle, a massive stuff after trying to break out and they fake out and clear all these orders out. Dude, you bet your ass I'm going to follow my original plan and get back in because I thought it would fail at outer lines, but now I have confirmation. So you can always get back in. That's the thing. Make sense? It's more of like, it's more of like a confidence shift in a mindset. You know, the people that are scared to follow their plan or risk money, I'm sorry, guys. Like I said at the beginning of this, of this webinar, it's much harder to be a trader. But the guys that are like, dude, I got a plan, man. And guess what? I'm willing to risk money because, what, okay, let me, let me say it like this. Do you think Alex goes in the market every day saying, man, I could lose four grand? Because that's, that's typically like his loss, right? Like if Alex loses, it's two to four grand, but his typical win is anywhere from like eight to 20. Do you think he goes in the market and says to himself, oh man, dude, I could lose four grand. He goes, dude, I'm willing to risk four grand to make 20. See the mindset, see the confidence in the way that's kind of executed just in verbal like association, man, I could lose four grand. Dude, I'm totally willing to lose four grand to make 20. It's like, it's like, what are you looking at the loss or the, what you could benefit? And this is the glass half empty, the glass half full kind of people, man. It's like, there's people out there that, dude, there's people out there that are terrified of flying in airplanes and guess what they're thinking about the whole time crashing. Then there's people that are in an airplane like, dude, this is so much safer than a car. I'm scared of cars. This is fucking great. Like, it's just the mindset, bro. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Price action is nothing. This is child's play. It's getting in those coconuts, which is so hard. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to reprogram you guys to fucking think like winners, dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, Poldo, yes, it's much safer to fly in a plane, but it's not even that because check this out. I used an example that's going to make you laugh. I'm terrified of planes. I am not scared for one minute in cars and I've totaled three cars. Dude, going for a car ride is my peace. Going in the air in an airplane is my fucking hell. But guess what? That's just my thought process because I know the statistics on surviving in a plane versus a car. Fuck, I've almost died in cars three times in my life, dude. I've had some serious accidents, but get, cause I'm crazy, dude. I, I, I was stupid as a kid. I almost flipped the car drifting. The point is, the point is, is you got to curb your confidence where you're not confident. And you got to look at it a different way. So now every time I get on a plane, I've helped myself over the years, but now I go, dude, the statistics are so in my favor. I try to psych myself up to get, get excited for a flight now. 
and this is what you guys should do with price action. My outer line's coming, man. Hell yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lose money. I'm risking money to make money. Oh, dude. I'm, I mean, I'm talking 16 years old, bro. Like a 2001 Honda Civic. <laughs> Nothing fun. But, but we went down a crazy hill at 50 miles an hour, flipped the e-brake during a rainy day, and basically almost killed I, me and my best friend almost killed each other. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, fun times, bro. Fun, but, but the funny part is, is I really am such a good driver because I've been driving for so many years. It's always been my bliss and I've done crazy things in cars to learn what not to do that, that it's my peace. I'm never scared to get in my car. And, and it's just a mindset shift. So my confidence is there. So I know how to push it. So I, I, I guess it's just, Again, man, again, to be a trader, sometimes you feel like you need Freud to understand your own brain. But when you get past your own fears in your brain, that's telling you why you're going to lose in trading, you're going to get better as a trader. It boils down to that simple thing. Alex doesn't say, oh man, I could lose four grand a day. He says, of course, I'm going to put four grand up to make fucking 20 or to make 700. That's the difference. That's the difference. And I'm as passionate as ever because I love talking about this stuff. Um, uh, did I miss anything? I may have, I was ranting for a while. You would have already established your, yes, you would already establish. Um, yep, exactly. What do you think about shorting each line with a tight stop? Oh, oh, that's a really good example. Um, let me go back to that LGVN. So here's another psychology th or no, sorry. Um, what was the stock that I, K, what, fuck, hold on one sec. I'm going, I'm trying to go back to the alley. Oh, KTTA. That's right. Um, let, uh, let me answer this from a, let me answer this almost with a question, Travers, or Xander, who asked this? Who asked this? Hold on. Xander asked this. Okay, this is a great question. Let me draw my lines again and show you guys real quick. It's a psychology thing. I'm going to show you guys something real quick. Seven, 758. So MIC process, and Alex has watched this and the way we kind of do things we would kind of use all three lines, right? Because it should fail if you scale right and you should get a nice, um, you should get a really nice nail and bill out of this. And if you do happen to get a death candle outer line, I mean, then that's just bread and butter, man. Now you're just padding the wallet. Now you're just like, dude, I really only want a nail and bill, but hey, thank God for this random home run, right? Okay, let me ask you a question. I'm gonna answer this with a question. If you used each line with a tight stop, like I'm gonna short at seven and risk 705 and then cut it, do the same at 750, what do you think, Xander, is gonna happen to your mindset by the time it hits where you wanted it to hit truly at eight and you know you've already taken two losses? You're gonna be scared, aren't you? That's the difference. I am trying to get you guys to think like winners and not scared like, hey, I'm gonna make a little bit of money, but I gotta dodge and duck and dive and, 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 and watch out for these exploding grenades and, and, and you know, dodge warfare. I want you guys excited for that, not like I'm just trying to duck and dodge and hopefully scrape a little money out of this. It's more of an aggressive mentality, but more of a confident mentality of, dude, the three lines, I'm prepped for that. And look, if you're not ready for three, Start at 750. If Alex wants seven to eight, start at 750 if you're not Alex's confidence level yet. Make sense? But don't start at seven, cut it. Start at 750, cut it with the thought of you'll cut it each line hoping for eight. Because by the time it gets to eight, dude, brother, you're not confident. I'm sorry. You're, there's no way. Because your mind has already told you, loser once, loser twice. Oh, maybe the third time's a charm. And if you do nail the third line, you're going to take the profit too quickly because you're going to be a pansy. Because you're like, okay, I'm right on this one. I got to make the money back. I got to make my money back. Does that make sense? And, and exactly right. St St Stan just said it. And Xander, I know you know this, but it's good to have confirmations because you have been trading for a little while with us. It is good to just talk about this stuff and reaffirm. That's why we do these webinars every single week. Guys, when you have a pre-plan of seven to eight, anything in that frame, I'll draw another oval for you. Anything in this level, you're excited to add because you've already preemptively said, I want anywhere in this area. If you don't want anywhere in this area, you need to wait for 750 to eight. Or if you're very not, you know, not ready to scale yet, you need to wait for eight to start, even start, not even take the first one at seven. My point is 
is when you have any type of shaded area, which is basically a scale zone, I don't care how big, you get excited at any point in that scale zone because you pre-planned it. And if you are excited and you're scared, you are not ready for the scale zone. Not yet, not yet, and that's okay. <laughs> did, 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 did you guys lose me? Okay. Did, did everybody hear me through that? I hope you guys heard me. Was it just David who lost me for a sec? Oh, okay, you guys heard me? Okay, I, David, I think you just cut out for a sec, buddy. But the, the point is, man, the point is, is if that is a little bit too much room for you, Xander, then use the upper half of Alex's watch list. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. If, okay, say Alex wants 14 to 15, 1450 to 15, use 1475 to 15. If Alex is saying six to 650 and that's too much for you, 625 to 650 for you. If this is too much, brother, 750 to eight. Use the top two thirds of his, of his lines, of his list. If that's too much for you in the start, that's, that's my recommendation. Everything, everything, everything comes back to confidence. And I know you're confident, Zan. I know you're a confident trader, brother, but, but, but you're trying to understand this a little bit more, right? I, I get that. Remember, man, we've been doing this so long, man. There's, there's many different ways to look at these type of um, perspectives, and I, and I get that, man. Dude, I, I've known traders from day one that were like, dude, I'll short seven to fucking nine, and I'll be confident. And look, I, I admire those people. I was never one of those guys. I was one of those guys where you short at seven, cut, Short at 750, cut and eight. And guess what? The only reason why I know how to talk about this is because I fucking failed at trying to do line for line, risking three and five cents. It doesn't work. You just tell yourself you're a loser each time you cut. I like to have a plan now, like Alex each day. I like this level to this level. Anything in there, it's go time, baby. I have programmed myself that anything within the shaded area or this scale zone, I am going to bring confidence to. Anything out, I cut. And that's where the robotic nature comes in is, hey, this is my plan. You know what? Anything above this, I, I don't even care, Xander, if you have to set your orders once you're in, set a stop loss and walk away from your computer, dude. There's a caveat to that though, because I've done that. I've done that before. I, I used to do that a long, long time ago. I would short a stock and in the beginning, I was so terribly nervous that I'd set a hard stop and I'd literally leave. I'd leave my desk. There's a problem with this though. Many times back in the past, especially when things didn't zombie like they did now, you could walk away. I mean, I can't tell you, bro, how many times I walked away. I swear to God, dude, say these were my short entries because it would usually be something like this if it was three lines. You know, I'd probably start in, it would usually look like this. Brother, I would come back with an open-ended no cover and cover there. Because I walked away, I didn't even leave it in the hands of my computer. I said, because there would be a hard stop right here. A full out, a market fucking hard stop out, everything. If like that would be the hard stop, I left my computer. But like I said, there's a caveat. Sometimes, well, most times nowadays, because this is kind of a zombie market and the old markets don't exist anymore. Now you'll get a nice flush and then it comes back. So, so in the past, I wouldn't have that many losses or I would if I just use outer lines, but nowadays you will, because here's what would happen. You short outer lines, you scale, and then you set a hard stop, you walk away, brother, here's what happens. It drops all the way to here and then zombies back and you actually missed a very profitable trade. And then your dumbass took a loss because you weren't at your computer. <laughs> like, dude, that happened to me. I had to readjust. So there's so many different ways to look at this man, but what you guys should understand is everything I talked about today, process is still the same. It's still the same. It's outer lines, it's confirmations, it's trend. It's still the same process. It's just how you wanna execute your own confidence level. There's some traders that can't even be at their desk and I get it, man. And guess what? I know traders, bro, who are super profitable, make a lot of money and can barely stand looking at price action being at their desk, they got a shaky hand. They're not a brain surgeon like Brian. <laughs> I just, you know, man, you find something that works for you. There's swing trading, there's long-term options, strike prices. There's, you know, being on the clock every second of the day. Um, Bal loves the channel trades. You know, th there's just many ways to skin a cat, man. And the market uh, is very, um, uh, it, it's an ATM machine once you figure out your comfort zone. That's, that's probably the best way to say it. The stock market's an ATM machine for everybody. 
only to the fuckers to figure out their confidence zone, their, their comfort zone though first. Swing trading is not made for everybody. Dude, I'm, I'm down $20,000 right now in one of my swing trades. I'm pissed. It went way lower than I expected, but I really, really like this company. I believe in it and I'm going to hold for the long haul and I'm only risking about 30, but dude, I'm fucking down 20 grand or 22 grand in this goddamn, no, not PayPal. <laughs> no, PayPal, no. Um, but then there's ones that I'm totally up in. So it balances out, right? But, but my point is, is that would scare the living, <laughs> not Corsair. That would scare the living hell out of some people. But that doesn't scare me. Like long-term swings are like my bread and butter. I barely look at it. It pissed me off a little bit, but that would give a heart attack to some people. And I'm talking about some people with money. I'm talking about some, dude, I know guys with millions in their account. They'd be like, I can't take fucking 20K on a position. I'm like, I can. <laughs> so, fucking Jay. I'm down a little bit in Zoom right now on a different position, a different account, but I made a lot of money on Zoom in the earlier part of the year. But right now I am down on a swing on Zoom a little bit. I, I'm not at like the 400s, man. No, no way. I got out those. I made money on those old school plays. Me and Faye were just talking about this, bro. The other day, man. Oh my God. Me and Faye were literally just talking about the Zoom days. We did good in the beginning, then took some losses on some swings down, and now we're just small. You just it's fucking Zoom, bro. Fucking Zoom. Yo, what's up, Steve? Okay, guys, I've ranted for a while. Let me just get back to a couple questions because I think I missed a lot. <laughs> um, shit, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm trying to get to every question, I promise. Yeah, it's definitely a good way to go. The problem I see with scaling is that if you have a 750 average and the stock is at eight and you need to nail and bail, you are probably getting out for break even or do you personally hold iron? Xander, great, dude, you're spot on with the questions today, brother. It is break even for a trader who is scared to scale properly. I, I, I can't, let me repeat, it is break even by the time the stock tanks for a trader who is scared to scale properly. When you know how to scale properly, you will not be break even by the time it tanks. I'll let you sit with that, but that's the explanation for that. Expectancy is all that matters, scale or not. Final work for your personality. Kevin, you just said it, buddy. Are your entries the same? No. And that is the answer to Xander's question. The answer is no. Most of the time, no. Sometimes, yes, but only if it's two lines and I just, and they're kind of close together and I want to do a double down effect. So what we're talking about is something like this. Say, say I just wanted 750 to eight or no, no, I'm sorry. I'm like 770. This, yes, I would do the same size, whatever. 2K shares, 2K share, whatever. Same size. If they're spread out, nope. That's the answer to the question. Starter, 800 shares, add two, maybe add four, whatever. I'm just giving you, and guys, break this down to a trader with 100 shares or 200 shares. You Maybe you're starting out with 50 shares. I don't know what your size is. It doesn't matter. Literally, I could care less. It doesn't matter. It's all in the pattern and how you execute. But no, when I'm scaling this, if you scale properly, that by the time it tanks and you get your quote unquote nail and bail, it, dude, Vic just said it, my man, Steve, Steve, one of our moderators on, on YouTube just said it. My first entry is always a small tester. Steve, you just nailed it. I don't care if you want to throw 10,000 shares on KTTA from seven to eight. Maybe your first entry is only 1300 shares out of 10. You see the difference? You see what I'm saying, guys? So by the time, yes, yeah, it's called dipping toes in. Nice, Steve, that's brilliantly said, yes. <laughs> no, Miguel, it's not beyond me. <laughs> you guys are trying to guess this fucking stock. Oh boy. Uh, a follow-up question, Tony. If you scale into a position and it goes towards outer lines, wouldn't your results be skewed towards full-size losers? And no, no, I see what you're saying here, buddy, but no, you know why? Because Tony, you might be kind of new, but when you really study MIC process, we're really methodical. Um, in anything over VWAP, brother, is only 30% of our size. So let me just write it in here. Uh, did I just do the, there we go. MIC process equals anything above VWAP equals 30% size. So you have to figure out what your usual full size is, Alex taught me this 
a couple years ago and boy does it man me and james ran with it alex alex learned it literally from i think brett steenbarger only like three years ago he taught it to me and james man dude i never again will i ever go full size above vwap even at outer lines bro it's always i i do i will admit sometimes i do break it and do like 40 percent, but it should and it's usually within this range though guys is 30 percent size 30 percent that's it <laughs> see i did i'll never touch that long are you kidding me um no it's a, it's a good company it'll come back but <laughs> this time it's different <laughs> until it isn't no no i i only long swing good companies guys i don't swing i don't long swing small caps i'd be out of my fucking mind <laughs> i don't know who can do, take and do that i can't do that's a superpower man um so tony to answer your question brother it's it's outer lines anything above VWAP is only 30 percent. this is how you get out of losing a shit ton of money on your losses because when this tanks under VWAP, then after your confirmation outer lines does death candle, whatever you're comfortable with, that's when you can start throwing on the size that, but only under VWAP is where you can do the, if you want to go a hundred percent, the other 70% brother. That's the key. Ooh, winded. I think I missed a lot of YouTube questions. Holy shit. Um, your line. Why is it better to scale three lines? And if it hits only one line, okay, hold on guys. Let me, let me uh, just read this again. I've been on YouTube. Why is it better to scale three lines? And if it hits only one, uh, sorry, only, only the first one. Oh, okay. You will only win, let's say one third of your size. Instead, isn't it better to wait for the perfect line for your full size bullet? Well, you know, to answer that, um, Ivan, it's, it's tricky, right? It's kind of a loaded question, right? Because it's like, dude, many times this only hits seven. Many times it only goes up to 750. And then sometimes it goes up to eight, maybe even eight, 10. So it's very, very hard to say where exactly it's going to go. You never know, dude. It, bro, it, Ivan, if we knew that it was only going to go to 750, brother, not only would we short full fucking size, we would never have a 30% size. But like, who knows, dude? It's hard. So trading is as much art as it is a science, as Bao has always said. You have to really feel it out. So sometimes, brother, and, and, and this is, I haven't even mentioned the fact that sometimes you just get a gut feeling that you're fucked. So sometimes, I can't tell you how many times, man, I'll see three lines and I'll be like, okay, I'm actually kind of hit hard at the first line. And then it really ramps up on volume. Maybe you hear a certain pumpers behind it and you're like, dude, I don't know where this like fear came out of, but I'm just not feeling this stock. And then you go really small, 500 share starter, dude, seriously, 700 shares. I'm not kidding you. And you're like, dude, I originally wanted to throw a lot more. Nope. I'm just not feeling it. So you don't know this is say, you know, and again, the more lines you have, but remember what I said earlier, Ivan, if you want to be a lot safer, you can just wait for 750 to eight. It's just on the more aggressive side, the more excited you are about it, you know that it could very well fail at seven because look at where all the resistance points are. You know, I'm a big drawer of the, of the, of the resistance point. I hear it. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's draw them out. Bro, top, top. This could arguably be a top right there. Top. They're all right here. You see this? And look how many are at the seven to 750 area specifically. To get eight on this, bro, was actually a very big long shot if it ran. Like, that's almost just like, Alex is basically just saying seven to 750 is really it. I'll risk to eight, but I, there's, like, I really don't think it'll make eight. And especially it topped out right here, right? Like, like, that's why we gave eight. But, dude, look at this seven. Like, where are the majority of the resistance points? That's why you start in at seven. You got to get some on. That's the point, is where is the majority of these ceilings, these tops, they're at seven to seven fifty, buddy. That's the difference. And who knows? It could, it could so easily be seven to eight ten. It goes, or it could be seven to seven fifteen. That's why you scale. I hope that was clear. Uh, do, do, do. How do you do all this with a nine to five job? Seems time consuming. I guess it becomes the new job. Great question on YouTube, guys. This is something that's probably going to help a lot of people. I'll tell you how you do it, JDG Lex. 
It is very fucking hard, bro. I worked two jobs for the first three years of my trading career while I woke up every single day. I worked till night. Dude, I literally traded from five in the morning, like I do now. I, back then, I actually traded to the end of the day. I was kind of, I would try and everything like channel trading, like balance stuff. And then I'd go to a job and then go to a night job as well in the like, dude, I'd go to bed at like 2 a.m. I never slept. I didn't sleep for fucking three years, man. So I feel you. It's like, I sympathize. Like it's so hard sometimes to do this with a normal job, but over time you will realize that process is a lot simpler than when we first start out and try to figure out all hours of the day. Now it's just literally dude, once you learn process and get good at it, all you need is really the first hour of the day to become a consistently profitable trader. So I know that kind of sounds crazy to untrained ears. It really does. But every single day, man, it's really wake up and give yourself an hour before open. And then all you need is really the first hour to really figure out how to make some money. So that, that's arguably two hours out of your day. Then go work as many jobs as you need. But again, at the end of the day, the real argument is how bad do you want it? If this is something that you feel is for you and you can, I mean, cause think about the benefits of being a trader, right? Let's think about the benefits. You really can do it wherever you are. You can travel. Technically all you need is a laptop. It's kind of a marketing ploy to say that. Um, the more screen real estate, the better. It's very hard to have a trading career just on a laptop, but you can do it. I mean, fuck dude, Bear has been doing it for years and Steve, Steve and trader. It's like the more screen real estate, the better, but, it's a job where all you need is a Wi-Fi connection, a laptop, a good broker, and a couple hours a day, man. Once you learn process, once you've committed. So it's how bad do you want it? That's the allure of trading. And not to give you guys some sales pitch or anything. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm just trying to tell you that's what allured me to trading was I was like, dude, I love computers. I, I'm kind of a tech guy. Like I love techie things. I'm not the most tech savvy guy in the world. I barely have, know how to fucking run a Zoom link, but, but I like tech. And I would love to learn how to do a career on the computer. So then I learned trading and I was like, God, this is the most mobile career that anybody could ever have. I could theoretically do this on my phone if I was just a swing trader, you know, not, not a day trader. You can't really day trade on a phone, but if I was just a swing trader, hundred percent or strike prices, I can just do options on my TD Ameritrade account on my freaking mobile device. So how bad do you want the, what this career offers? And the benefits are extraordinary. Once you get it, they're extraordinary. So yeah, that's kind of what it is. Steve, what's up, buddy? See you, buddy. Steve says, I still work full time. I trade the first hour a day. Um, and then he's got a roll. His wife is going to kill him. <laughs> Steve's wife is going to kill him. See you, Steve. Oh, boy, you're funny. Hey, Steven, what's up, man? And this is the guy that I was just telling you about, our travel trader, bro. This is this is the guy that's, look at this guy. Did I just tell you he's trading on a freaking laptop everywhere, bro? He's got that goddamn pyramids behind him. And he's making money, man. Steven, you're a legend, bro. I love it. I love seeing the freedom, man. Because at the end of the day, guys, what you're going to realize about trading, we don't like trading for the money. We like trading for the freedom. You don't even like money for money. What the fuck is money? It's paper that can be burned. It's free. It buys you freedom, man. We're all just after not having to take orders and, and work with people we hate or do a job that we don't like and commute two hours to work. That's what we're all after, man. That's what we've been after. That's what we're trying to provide to you. I said in the beginning of this webinar, an extra $200 a day can bring so many people freedom. And that was our goal. You think we thought about when we first started MIC, hey, let's make a bunch of millionaires and then market millionaires. Have we ever once marketed a millionaire trader? I'm sure we've got them. I honestly, but like, we don't even ask that question. <laughs> like we don't give a fuck. We just want you guys to be happier with your life through the results of the teachings that it provide you. I'm ranting again. You better stop me. I'm ranting. Ultimately, it's all about trading our money for time versus trading our time for money. Correct. Very well said. Guys, freedom is all you want. You know, the cars, the watches, the blah, 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 the, 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 the people that it could buy, the friendship. Sure. If, if you're into that stuff, do it. No judgment, man. Zero judgment, man. That stuff's fun. The to but just know, man, when the toys get, the more expensive the toys get, the more respons the responsibility, the more headache. Dude, I, I mean, that's, that's kind of like fuck you first or um, rich people problems kind of thing. But but there's truth to that, man. I, I, dude, I've got millionaire friends, man, that sold their Lamborghinis, sold their fucking Rolexes. You know why? 
because they said, I thought I wanted all this shit. And guess what, man? The upkeep, the, the people look at you all day. They've got a judgment about you just because you roll up in a nice car to a business meeting with a nice watch. They already feel like they know you and can comment. They didn't want it. They got rid of it, dude. It's just at the end of the day, man, do you live life on terms that you love? And trading brings that for a lot of people because it brings freedom. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be an addict to adrenaline man for the rest of your life bro you ain't gonna be free of that i don't care whether you're a good trader or a bad trader bro you this fucking game is adrenaline bro i've been on adrenaline for eight god dang years and i'm still on adrenaline because i give webinars i get passionate and i'm hyped up on caffeine but you're gonna be an adrenaline junkie i'm sorry to say you're gonna be a slave to it dude oh boy man you guys are fun with the job, you sell your time. With this, you have time to share value. To other. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Okay. Uh, Hazik, is it, is it good to trade before 7.30 a.m.? Office hour starts early for me. Um, I'm assuming you're not on the West Coast, brother, where 7.30 is pretty much <laughs> zombie hour for us. I'm assuming you're probably talking about East Coast time, and that's trading. Dude, that's so sick. And you're talking more of trading in pre-market. There's not exactly a serious edge with that. And I don't recommend it. People have made it work, but I, I, it's very rare that people make that work as a full process. What I would recommend, brother, is looking into swing trading that we teach and or options trading because you get longer time frames. So if you guys legitimately, I'm not kidding. If you legitimately have kids, have a wife, have a husband, have three jobs that you can barely commit trading to, learn long time frames of how to make money in the market. And you're going to learn that with our options course, long-term strike prices and, or just a general swing trading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, swing trading is fucking awesome. Dude. I love swing trading because you don't have to be glued to locate. You're a broker, et cetera, et cetera. Some days, man, some days, I don't even crack my computer open for small caps. If I see that the big cap market is extremely volatile, I'll just do on some swings. Cause if I'm too tired to wake up or I'm not feeling it, a dude, some days I literally switch hit like a batter in baseball. I'm like, you know what, dude, I'm going lefty today. I'm too fucking tired. I, I feel drunk from the night before, even though I don't drink, but you know, that, that kind of hungover feeling, whether you drink or not, you're just exhausted. Maybe you've been with a lady. Maybe you were out late. I, I don't judge, but exactly Stan. There are days where sometimes you want to just day trade. There's days where, dude, I don't even want to wake up and I just want to do a swing trade or two. If I see a, if I see a, um, a price target I really like on a big cap, um, like PayPal or something like that. <laughs> so I, so there's a whole other thing to be said for Zoom right now, man. Is this a good company on sale or just a piece of shit going down like the Hindenburg, baby? I don't know. But <laughs> this fucking stock, this has given me and Faye nightmares. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm down a little bit on zoom right now. I, I got a little bit, I got a little bit, but just because I, I actually do like zoom and it's so obviously slaughtered that I have a little bit, but it's more of like, it's not a size play, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you, not something I'd recommend. Zoom has proven it's a piece of dookie. Um, is it a good idea to swing low cap shit? Uh, nah, I mean, it's, you know what, man? Talk to Stan and Faye about that, or Tay. It's, if you have a strategy that can make it work, sure, but you better have your stops in a lot sooner than something I'd have stops in on something like PayPal or Zoom. It, real companies, man. Real com Yeah, just like Stan just said. It, it, real companies. I, 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 I never swing a small cap. I never will. I, I just, I used to swing short, but again, Four years ago, we didn't get the zombie backs that we do. I cannot tell you how many times I would swing, LGB, I would swing short something like this. Like, dude, I'm not even kidding you. If this was like the close, like the market close, I would swing short this in the next day. I'd wake up to a gap down of $4 and I'd be up like, hey, I just started the day with 2000 bucks or I started the day with freaking 800 bucks, whatever. I started the day with like a, I swing shorted small caps overnight, paid whatever the, you know, the, the rate locate fees were. And I made some money to start the day and it was cool. And then we could start a new trading day, but those days don't exist anymore, man. So I don't, I haven't swung short in years. Bao actually was the one that talked, like talked to me out of that many years. He was like, dude, two years ago, he's like, bro, I used to do this all the time too. You just can't fucking do it anymore. I'm like, you know what, man, you're right. 
you are right because it, it, you just can't, man. Because say, say this was your swing short, dude. Like this was your swing short at night. And then you would just wake up to something like at 45 and you're like, dude, I was shorting. Even just that, think about that, bro. Think about a thousand shares on a stock with this kind of range. You short at 30, say you wake up to, 40, you, dude, really? It's not worth it. A hundred shares lose. You wake up a thousand dollars down. It's not worth it. There are long strategies now based around squeezing swing shorts. Yep, definitely. Algos have learned, big money's learned, the markets have changed. And look, I don't ever want to swing short anymore because of one thing. I'm going to show you it. I'm going to Google it. You know, the birth of Robin Hood, bro. Everybody and their mother has the ability to think investing is simple because this platform right here has made it so simple. This is not even a teardown on them, bro. If anything, this is a fucking compliment. This is what their charts look like. They have simplified the ease and workflow and making it so the average 17, 18 year old, 19 year old, 24 year old, your grandma, 84 can invest and own shares like with a click of one button. It's as clear as it gets, bro. Like you open up a TD Ameritrade account, it's kind of hard to use at the beginning. You know what the fuck's going on. Open up E-Trade, that's a nightmare. Um, Fidelity, things, I don't know. DOS Mobile is a nightmare, bro. It's it, like, you will never figure that out on day one. You open up a Robinhood account, your grandma will know how to be a trader on Robinhood by the end of the day. That has added so much volume to the markets and so many pumpers exist these days that to swing short small caps overnight you're out of your mind, in my opinion. The days don't exist anymore where you could do that. Unless there is always a second opinion or a debate, unless you are like a couple of very respected traders on Twitter, I'm not going to mention names, that are comfortable being down 700 grand because they're trying to make 2 million. I used to trade with those guys. I used to be in the same room as those guys. I used to be in a room of 17 people. And one of them was a guy who would literally risk like $70,000 a trade and make like 10 million a year. I like, I'm just saying, but unless you're that guy who's like, look, I'll short it five, I'll double down at 10 and I'll marry it at 15 because the com company's fundamentals are terrible. You can't be an active day trader going line to line and doing that. You just can't. It, it's just the realistics, man. I've seen it all, man. I've been in this industry for too long. I know the, the changing markets. This is the shit that happens, man. You get zombies and squeezes all the time now. And you got to be careful of this. Yep. Oh, I'm winded. <laughs> so no, I mean, just to uh, bottleneck that and kind of answer your question, brother, is um, I don't believe in swing, especially small cap short selling swing trade. Uh, there are ex examples if you get a really good price on a long, you like, and I mean like the beginning of something, like say this, I'll give you this. I will give you this. Say you got a long right here on something like uh, LGBM yesterday or two days ago, right? And you get along at 830. You know what, dude? If you see this go to 20 and you still haven't taken profits, yeah, fuck it, dude. Set a stop at eight break even, maybe $1 loss, and then just see what happens. I will give you the long side. I'll give it to you, but the only way I'd want anybody to swing, and you got to still know the risks, if you have such an unbelievable um, um, average that by the time the day closes and you swing, you are so in the money that even a gap down the next day, will you'll still be in the money. I will give you that, but you also have to know that if you are getting involved in something that, you know how SEC filings work, you know how dilution works, you know an active shelf if they have one, and number four, bingo, bango, bongo, you know where the fuck a T12 haul is. Because if a T12 does come around, your money not only could be locked up for months or even years, no matter if you're in the money or not, you gotta know the risks. So I will say, I would much rather have people do a swing trade on the long only if they're super in the money and they are okay with the risks. But small, small cap swing shorting an everyday retail trader on the short side, dude, you, you're going to shit your pants daily. You might wake up needing a defibrillator. In my two years at MIC, I don't, nope, no, you haven't. Kyle, you haven't. 
because we don't do that anymore. We used to all the time, bro. I would lit, dude, I, oh my God, you guys don't understand, bro. Before MIC was created, me and Alex had a room together, but just as a friend's room, like we had like 15 people in it. I would literally shoot, we like, it wasn't paid or anything. It was just like, just a bunch of kids running around, like, like just good traders, just shooting the shit with each other. And I would say to Alex, Alex, what are we swing shorting overnight? He'd be like, dude, I have a hundred grand of this small cap short. I'd be like, all right, all right, I'll, I'll throw five on. Dude, we used to be animals on swing short. We never, ne like never anymore, never. Process does not allow it anymore. You have to adapt or you're gonna be a dinosaur and you're gonna die. <laughs> if we don't do it anymore and we used to do it, well, dude, I used to swing short twice a week. I'd wake up overnight to money or I'd wake up down a little bit, I cut it. But the zombies, dude, it, it's night of the living dead these days, bro. I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. Is it possible to get the pivot point? I have no idea, Tony. I have, bro, I have no idea. <laughs> I can't answer, I have no idea. I, I hope so for your sake. <laughs> you could just download TD, man. You fucking dude, download TD. Even if you only put $5 in the account. I love these charts, bro. Look at these charts, man. Guys, if you can, oh, Canadian, man, I'm sorry. I know. I sympathize, bro. I really fucking do. See if you have a U.S. friend that can. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I just, I, man, I just, I'll never get around how awesome TD Ameritrade charts are. That's why I've still been using them for, for these, um, for four years for you guys still on these webinars is I've never stopped using them for charting and educating. Yeah. Man, we went through a lot of stuff today, didn't we? Damn, I didn't even realize. There's a lot to talk about today. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Awesome. Joe Kelly's the man, dude. I'm telling you. Yep, TOS, that's how you do it. And then um, I think Kay said that you guys can on TradingView. Kay, if that's a confirmation of that, thank you for that. Um, definitely use your resources, guys. I'm sure some members, any member in here is going to show you how to do something because they're probably utilizing it themselves. Wow, man, look at, this is crack week, bro. This is why I'm not shorting this week. Only swing longs. That's all I care about this week. I, I don't want to get caught in any of this. Is this going to break the previous high of day two days ago? This is insane. The, <laughs> the after hours high, for God's sakes. I'd expect nothing less on this week. Guys, any closing questions real quick before we wrap this up? <laughs> I feel you. T now that I can condone because I know you're just trying to satisfy your FOMO. So that's hysterical, bro. But I totally, I, Hey, you can buy yourself a Starbucks, bro. <laughs> you can buy yourself a freaking latte now. Um, that is a whole other story guys is if you just cannot control your FOMO cause you're just one of those people. I get it. I've been there. You throw a share in, right? Throw <laughs> a share in because you're like, dude, I can't control myself. If I don't throw in one share in, I'm throwing a thousand in and I'm going to take a big loss. If you have to satisfy your addiction, man, I get it. I've been there, dude. Even Alex does it these days. It's so funny when, because Alex is the size thrower of all three of us. In fact, probably the biggest size thrower of MIC and especially the teams and the mods, definitely. And it's so funny to me, dude, when, I, when I'm like, Alex, how many shares did you throw in that story? He'll even say it too, because he just wanted to dip his toes in and satisfy the FOMO. He'll go in pre-market like 50 shares. I'm like, didn't you miss a couple zeros or like three zeros? He's like, no, nah, dude, just dipping my toes in to cure the FOMO, man. Oh, shit. Uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I used to be an MIC member, but I don't have the time now to day trade and was wondering whether I could swing trade short. But yes, these zombies. Yeah, exactly, Ivan. And if you ever want to come back, man, just, just text me, bro. We'll get you back in. Uh, but, I, but I feel you, man, having the time to do trading sometimes is a hurdle. So that's why we try to cater to everybody and everybody's play styles of swing trading and, you know, long-term ex expiration, you know, strike prices, things like that. Hell yeah. All right, guys, I'm so winded, man. I kind of got a headache. I'm going to go take an Advil and probably take a nap. So uh, just really quick, guys, we literally have like three spots left for the 50% off, and then we are taking that off um, tonight. So hopefully they fill up. Yeah, probably immediately after this webinar, but um, 
just here to help, man. Just here to help. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Enjoy your Thanksgivings. You got to take a break from charts, man. Go be with your fucking family, bro. I don't, dude, I don't care if you live alone. Spend it with your dog, man. Take a day away from charts. Go give it to the people you love. We love you guys here at MIC. We're always going to be here for you. Um, excited for next week. Hopefully Bao is, um, Bao's son was in town, which he doesn't see his son too much. So, um, that's why he's not here today, but he had a last day with his son in, um, uh, where he lives. So, you know, that, he'll be back probably next week and, and we'll do this, man. Exactly guys. All right, man. Enjoy your weekends. Enjoy your, uh, holidays and we'll see you guys back, man. And remember it's a half day on Friday and I won't be expecting much from that. <laughs> so see you guys. Catch you later, man.